Joining us now via Zoom is former BYU and NFL linebacker. He's a Super Bowl champion. Brady Papinga, who was in the stadium for the Virginia at BYU shootout melee. Brady, Let's talk about this wallpaper behind yeah, it's, you. It's great to have you back on the show. That That is quite the wallpaper, man. Fancy. Yeah, well, it's, you know, my wife's choice, so I just kind of go with whatever she wants to go with. <laughs> it's you know, nice, dude. Whatever she wants to do. So, hey. I mean, I didn't really have a say in it, so yeah. we're good. Hey, listen, Brady, you, uh, if with that knowledge and logic, you you clearly have uh, matured and grown up nicely. I mean, that uh, when you go with the wife, <laughs> that, that, that is an important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy life, happy wife. You guys know how it is, so... <laughs> BYU number 15 in the college football playoff rankings after that wild win against Virginia, 66-49. What do you think about BYU's placement in the initial college football playoff poll and now their lingering heartbeat for a New Year's Six hope? Well, I think there is a national acknowledgement of BYU and how well they're playing. That's what it showed me. They got two losses, but yet they're right in the thick of at least, you know, being in the 15 and they could jump up maybe into the top 10 as they continue to play out the year, get some style points the next couple of weeks. And if they really, you know, have a dominant win versus USC, which is possible uh, with all the turmoil that's happened down there uh, things. And with people losing in front of them, things could really change for, for them and being in that position, which be in it, in and of itself, whether they get that New Year's six pull invite or not is already like a, a very, good indication that the nation in general is starting to wake up to BYU football. I believe last year was kind of where everybody was like, wait, what's going on over there? And then this year it's just really exploded with the big 12 invite. And then the, the way they're playing too, like you heard Bronco after the game, he's like, Hey, this is one of the most, if not the most physical team par paraphrasing what he said that we faced. And then, you know, you match it up with their skill positions. And so it's, it's, it's respect and, and people are starting to take notice. Put some respect on BYU's name. It felt good, right? Especially after last year where BYU showed up at 14 and we thought BYU would be higher and they weren't and they had to take the Coastal game to feel like they could go up, blah, blah, blah. This year has been so validating, Brady, because now BYU is going into the Big 12 and it's like, okay, can BYU have a season where it has a ton of Power Fives and survive? Yes is the answer and thrive. Because next year, BYU's got Notre Dame and Baylor and Arkansas and Stanford and Oregon. I mean, that's going to be another tough one. So what has BYU done to sort of climb into this position where we think, hey, maybe BYU can go into the Big 12 and not just be there but compete well? I mean, the biggest thing that they, they have going for them is they're a complete team. You know, I mean, there's so many years to where it's like, okay, you'll have really good offensive linemen or defensive linemen. And this is more specific to BYU. And then maybe you'll have like a good skill position player here or there. And then, you know, you get against these teams who, who have more ample supply of skill position. You get exploited, you know? And so what you're seeing is across the board, they have guys to where you could go out as we saw against Virginia, like everybody thinks that that game shows how bad BYU's defense is. They give up 35 points in the second quarter, which, you know, that's, that's tough. But I mean, look at the other quarters, especially in the second half, they tighten things down. My point is, is that game was a game. I mean, Virginia's offense is loaded. I mean, loaded. Okay. You guys saw two, you saw three, number four is okay. <laughs> Zero was good. I've watched them all year. That is, no team has stopped that offense, you know, and BYU has actually played the best against that offense than any other team in the AC, including, you know, all the ACC teams they face. So to me, it's just the, the completeness of BYU football right now. Brady Papinga is with us on uh, BYU. That I have seen. I, I mean, it's, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, sure. And, and, with, and Brady, I, I'd like I'd like to talk some more about uh, Elisa Tuiaki and the adjustments he made at halftime specifically. Uh, what did you like, and, and what was the cause of BYU turning it around so that you're like, look, see, this is a good defense. What what did you see from them so, so that they have earned the right to receive some more respect on the defensive side of the ball? Well, the biggest thing about them, and it's been a theme all year, is their philosophy isn't like, hey, we're going to go shut you down. And to where we just suffocate you, you know, and, and in today's world of football, to where all the rules, both in college, the pros, I mean, even in high school, basically favor the offense. 
you may never see a defense like that again. Maybe you'll see one once every 10 years. Like in the NFL, you've seen the Broncos and the Seahawks, and that's about it. You know, after that, you don't see defenses just clamping down on offenses anymore. So now it becomes more of, hey, we have to mitigate the big plays. And then when it is critical moments, we have to find a way to make a stop. And so when you look at those two elements, don't give up the big play consistently, and then then find a way to make a stop, whether it's forcing a fumble, getting an interception, or just getting off the field in a critical moment, they've done that. And that's all you can ask for. I don't care. If you think that this BYU or any defense for that matter is going to be a defense that is going to shut teams down and it's going to be a 66 to zero game. Oh, now I'm going to be happy with the defense. <laughs> You're living in a fantasy land. Okay. <laughs> get, take off. You know, maybe you're on drugs. I don't know. I'm not trying to, you know, tell anybody who's a drug addict out there that you're a drug addict, but it's not reality, okay? Yeah, you're wearing those glasses. You've probably injected some substance into your body to where your <laughs> sense of reality is not accurate, okay? Playing good defense in today's era is not giving up the big play consistently and then being able to make critical plays in critical moments to help your team win games. And if you have to give up 49 points or however many points be all you gave up, as long as your offense has one more point, that's a win for everybody, okay? And that's a good team. And you face other good teams. And let me tell you another thing. What's good about this schedule, and, and, and I think, because I think in the BYU Fandonia, people think that, oh, if for us to have a successful season, we need to go undefeated, just like they did back in the 80s. No, get ready, because when you go to the Big 12, you are going to be able to, and this is what's great about being in the Big 12, you can, you could have this exact same record and if they were in the Big 12, they might just be in the top 10. Yeah. And you want to win your conference, and you have enough style points. And, and, and it looks like the, the college playoffs can expand anyway. But if you go on and win your conference, you're in the championship uh, or in the tournament for the championship. And hell, you may even lose four games. So don't just, I mean, people get so nuclear when it comes to like a little adversity because they're so used to the 80s when BYU was in the whack and. They're going undefeated, and that's not that's not where it's at. And there's a lot of parity, but BYU is very well positioned. And yes, their defense is a really good defense. Don't look at all those statistics; it's very easy to see. If you want to see a bad defense, okay, you had a good one last week with Virginia. Their defense <laughs> is bad, okay. And I can say that my brother's part of that defense, and he admits it. And I've been watching them just as much as I've been watching BYU. I would say BYU's defense, I I can live with them. I'm happy with them. Virginia defense, they make me so mad that you ask my my kids, they're like, Dad, why are you walking around the house so upset? I'm like, I'm watching this dang Virginia defense right now. <laughs> Brady Papinga is with us on BYU Sports <laughs> Have Nation. an opinion, Brady. Absolutely bringing it today. Gosh. This is the energy we need on Friday. Uh, of course, we push forward to BYU's senior day against Idaho State. You talked about style points. We're focusing on the guys – who are underclassmen who might be playing their final game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and we think that Tyler Algier is probably playing his final home game. Where do you stand on the be. Tyler Algier leaving BYU early to pursue an NFL career? He needs to. Um, and, I, you know, I did, the NIL has been great, but that's not going to compensate him for the kind of money he's going to be able to make in the NFL. And running backs, especially his style, He's got a very limited shelf life. I mean, this guy, if he played five years in the NFL, it would be a really great career for him. And you don't want to change out one year in the NFL for one. I mean, just speaking business. Now, I mean, if he's got an emotional attachment to BYU and he wants to come back with his teammates and, you know, all that kind of stuff, that's great. And, and money's not everything. But just purely from a business standpoint, hey, I want to maximize my, my ability to make money while playing football, he's got to go. They're just, there's no question about it. Another guy that's, you know, I didn't want, I, I don't, I hope he's not watching. So Peyton, turn off your, uh, turn off your <laughs> radio. Do not look at this, but Peyton Wilger, I mean, I, he's a, he's a redshirt sophomore, but I believe he's a guy that he should turn in his, this is what I believe he should do. He should turn his papers in, see where the NFL evaluates him. If he's in a first or second round situation, he should strongly consider if he gets a first through third round, maybe fourth round grade, he needs to strongly consider getting insurance if he feels like he wants to come back and maybe, you know, up his draft stock. I don't know. But he's a guy that, I mean, there's, I watch, like I've watched him closely for the last couple of years and he's improved tremendously and I continue. I mean, this guy is, 
he's the next, you know, Kavanoi, the next Fred Warner, Taki Taki. He fits that same mold of, you know, all time great BYU linebackers. And he fits exactly what NFL teams are looking for, for off the ball linebackers. And he's versatile enough to play multiple positions, but that would be another guy that I would, uh, I, I would tell him to strongly consider looking deeply into it and getting all the information. Don't, don't just, you know, go, go up hastily and declare, Oh, I'm out of here. You know, get the information. And if, like I said, you feel like after receiving that information, you can improve on that draft stock, get an insurance policy so that if you do have a loss of value, at least you're, you're locked into that. And uh, those would be the two guys right now that I'd say that I, I would strongly suggest Tyler for surely go. Uh, but Peyton, yeah, he needs to look into that. How about BYU's recruiting to get these guys as preferred walk-ons? to eventually be the two we're talking about. We didn't bring up a scholarship guy, which is crazy. Okay, let's not bury the lead here. Last week you were in town. You ran out one of the flags, didn't pull a hammy. That's great. And after you run out, you actually came over and went and hugged Bronco. What was that like? Yeah, man, I just wanted to let him know I loved him, you know, and I know that it's hard. I, I, it's hard for him to be back to BYU. You know, he, he just – Whatever Bronco does, and if you guys know Bronco, he fully gives himself to whatever endeavor it is. It could be football, it could be church, it could be his family, friendships, whatever it is. This guy doesn't hold back, and he gives himself to the to the most microcellular level. And so, for him to be back, I mean, in reality, I mean, he was facing himself. You know, he he built what the product you're seeing right now is what he helped build, and he's facing that. So, you know, I just want to let him know, you know how I felt about him. And I do, I always, I always have had a, a special connection to Bronco. He's a kindred spirit. And also I was extremely appreciative of not only his impact on my life, my brother's life, but what he did for, you know, BYU football, which has always been a big part of my life. And so what it means to represent the university and the church, you know, as the most visible form and mechanism of the university. So for him to, to do what he did and for what he means to me, yeah, it's the least I can do is go give the guy a hug and let him know that, you know, I love him and I appreciate him. Brady Papinga with us on BYU Sports Nation, former NFL and BYU linebacker. The emotions were strong last week. The emotions for BYU are understandably going to be strong tomorrow on senior day. What do you remember about your senior day experience and what these guys are going to be feeling tomorrow? It comes fast. You know, that's the thing is because I was one of those guys that dreamt about playing BYU at BYU from when I was, you know, four or five. And my whole life, that's all I obsessed about was playing at BYU to the point where I was getting recruited in big schools would say, hey, are you, would you give us a chance? Like Nebraska, would you give us a chance? And I'm like, no, I'm going to BYU. Don't even, don't even recruit. <laughs> you know, that's where I was at. And so to, to come to that point where it ended, you know, it was a fast ride. And so I think that's what these guys will realize. It comes and it goes fast. Um, the great thing about BYU football, though, you'll always be connected and you'll always be a Cougar. And, uh, you know, so it's it's just one of those realizations that things come and they go. So you got to really take advantage of it. And I know if you don't, man, it's hard, you know, to, to come to that conclusion. We need more Brady Papinga on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, so let's, let's try and make that happen. Well, you might have to have a, you might have to get a mute button, you know, you might have to delay, me, you know, you, well, I know at Fox sports. They literally told me that like Brady, I have told our producer that if you go off on a tangent, we're going to cut your mic. Like, All right, whatever. <laughs> That's great. If we, you guys want to, you know, five second delay and do that, you might, you know, we can do that. We, can hey, work we, that. we appreciate this energy. It's fantastic. It's so great to talk with you, Brady. Uh, we appreciate your insights and your opinions as always. Take care. We'll talk again soon. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Brady Papinga on BYU Sports Nation. He only cursed once. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs>